Asmi and Joe are going to talk about, and most likely Joe is going to talk about what he's doing there with that utility pole. Uh, back, Joe. Hey, Joe, you're on. So I, I, I will first, um, I will first set the scene. We are on the approach road to Fukushima Daiichi. The first, um, uh, rather, the first, <laughs> the first guard post is is about a hundred yards behind me, hundred meters behind me, uh, and we are about what would you say, Joe? How far from the uh, reactor? From the, from the reactor here, are about twelve hundred meters. Twelve hundred meters from the reactors. Uh, right here, what in front of me, on the other side of this fence here, is the um, interim storage zone for all the decontamination waste. You can see big stacks of bags here. A lot of trucks come in and out here. Uh, and uh, about a week and a half ago, yep. uh, we came here and Joe installed uh, a SolarCast Nano right here. Uh, and it's been running live. It's one of the closest ones to Fukushima Daiichi. The closest now. The closest one now. So Joe, what do you want to say about it? Well, the, this is a, a kind of a gray area. The, the zone over there is kind of handled by the road. That really is the storage area. So we just literally found this spot because it doesn't really have any jurisdiction. The pole itself is vertically divided uh, into, you know, the, the lower parts are for community messages and things. The middle upper the middle upper part is for uh, local communications, telephone and stuff. And above that, it belongs to power company. And so nobody really owns all of the poles who are pretty confident that the putting centers here, it'll stay for a long time, won't be anybody's way. And it's, it's kind of a good spot to, uh, to collect data without having to go through as much red tape as we had to do at some of those places we put centers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, from where I'm standing, I can see down the road the big water tanks at Fukushima Daiichi. And I think we're going to segue here uh, into a conversation with uh, Dr. Ken Bissler of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, who, as uh, we've known for many years, have a good uh, you know, uh, kind of collegial relationship, uh, exchanging information, et cetera. And he has a lot to say about things like the water in those tanks. So um, I guess we can just go ahead on to that, Peter. Is that what you want to do? That's what we're going to do, Asbi. So th thank you for, for, for showing us that. And uh, if you go to safecast.org and you go to uh, the, the map that we have, you can find that sensor on the map uh, together with another 160 million measurements that all our volunteers have collected over the last 10 years. So do check that out. It is one of our most treasured things is our open data, the data that we share every day with yeah. you. Yeah. So and I'll just point out that we are establishing a ring of real-time sensors close to Fukushima Daiichi <laughs> and, and we'll keep keep adding more. And, and if you would like to have something like that where you are, wherever you are in the world, then keep in touch, get in touch with us. As uh, Rayose was talking this morning, we're in the process of launching a update to the uh, SolarCast Nano, which will going to be the Air Note or Red Note. And once it is available, of course, uh, we will talk about that uh, on our blog and on our social media. So stay tuned. So Kelsey, let's, Rock and roll. And meanwhile, we will head to Futaba and see you in a few minutes.